Let's talk about Elon Musk's vision for an electric vehicle future. It's something that Tesla laid out pretty clearly in their new master plan part three, which has just recently been published as a 41 page white paper. So we have more details to work with now than ever before. The end game here is to replace every ICE vehicle in the world with an electric equivalent. Right now, we have about 1.4 billion vehicles on the road around the world, and we produce about 85 million new vehicles every year, with only 10 million of those being considered electric cars, which still includes hybrid vehicles, so fully electric is actually even a smaller fraction. We have a long way to go, but the advantages of making the changes are undeniable. Not just for reducing air pollution, that's great, but what we are really doing by transitioning our vehicle fleet is gaining a massive jump in efficiency. We would cut vast amounts of waste from one of the most energy intensive industries on earth, and that is going to have a net benefit across the board for everyone. It is something that will have to happen eventually, so we might as well have a plan to get it done. And we do. Here's what it looks like. Here is the real reason that we need to transition to electric vehicles. Efficiency. EVs are on average more than four times more efficient than internal combustion engines, and that comes from a more effective powertrain, regenerative braking, and an optimized vehicle platform design. And this holds true for every vehicle class from passenger cars to class eight heavy trucks. The average fuel economy for a passenger vehicle is 24.2 miles per gallon of gasoline. The equivalent efficiency of an EV would be 115 miles per gallon, 4.8 times more effective at converting stored energy into motion. If you take a close look, it's pretty easy to see this in action. All of the heat produced by a combustion vehicle is wasted energy. The second law of thermodynamics is entropy. All matter naturally wants to flow from order to disorder. The more inefficiency that you have in a closed system, the more entropy it will produce, and disordered energy is no longer available to contribute physical work within that system. So instead of converting all of the molecular energy stored in your gasoline into kinetic energy of a vehicle in motion, the combustion engine loses most of that energy to the process of entropy. The energy moves to a disordered or chaotic state, which is heat and it contributes nothing to moving the vehicle. This is one of the main themes for the new master plan. It's not just about replacing fossil fuel energy with sustainable energy, it also includes an overall reduction in the amount of energy that we consume. In theory, we would only need about half as much total energy to power a sustainable economy because we would simply waste less of it in the process of consumption. Regardless, we are still going to need a lot of energy to power these 1 billion electric vehicles, and that is going to need to be stored in batteries. Making cars is easy, anyone can do that. Making batteries is significantly more complicated. Tesla is forecasting that the global vehicle fleet of 1 billion EVs will require 112 terawatt hours of battery cells. This is problematic. Right now we have a global lithium ion battery manufacturing volume of around one terawatt hour with about 300 gigawatt hours of batteries available for the automotive industry. For context, there are 1000 gigawatts in a terawatt. So historically we are doing really well compared to where we were even one decade ago. The production volume has grown exponentially, but compared to where we need to be to accomplish this 1 billion vehicle plan, we've got to pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. According to Tesla's philosophy, all standard range vehicles should be using low energy density chemistries like LFP, while only long range vehicles will require higher density nickel based chemistry. This strategy will help to greatly expand manufacturing capacity in the battery industry because these lower density cells are able to make use of much more abundant cathode materials like iron. And this trend is already spreading fast. Tesla made the first move to transition their standard range Model 3 to LFP batteries last year, and now we've seen Rivian announce that they are introducing LFP battery pack options across their entire product line. 
Ford will also be rolling out LFP to the Mach-E this year with plans to build a dedicated LFP battery plant in Michigan by 2026. And word on the street is that Tesla will be building yet another factory here in North America, this one specifically to manufacture LFP batteries. Both the Ford and Tesla battery plants will be done in partnership with Chinese company CATL. These guys are at the heart of LFP battery manufacturing because up until very recently, they held the patent of this particular battery chemistry. So there is no one else in the world who has the same level of experience with producing these cells. But with those patents now expiring, it means that other companies can start working on their own methods for producing LFP batteries in the future. So we know that production volume for these low density chemistries will continue to increase rapidly over the years to come, which is great news. According to Tesla's white paper, all compact and mid-sized vehicles in the future should be powered by LFP cathodes, in addition to all buses and short-range heavy trucks. Compact cars will take up the majority of the global fleet, with 42 million sold per year and a global fleet of over 600 million total. That's going to require 36 terawatt hours of LFP batteries. Tesla has yet to reveal their own equivalent of a compact electric vehicle, but we know that it is coming soon. We know that Elon expects the compact Tesla to outsell all other Tesla models combined, and we've heard that the company is preparing to manufacture 4 million of these compacts per year at different factory locations around the world. At least 1 million units per year will be produced from Giga Mexico, which is soon to become Tesla's largest gigafactory. But these high-density chemistries still have a part to play in the global EV fleet. Tesla considered the future high-density chemistry to be their low-cobalt nickel-manganese cathode that is currently in production for the 4680 battery cell. We know that Tesla has planned to remove cobalt entirely from their battery chemistry, but it hasn't happened yet, and we haven't really seen any evidence that a zero-cobalt nickel chemistry is really viable, but that could very well come in the future. Between vans, large sedans, SUVs and trucks, plus long-range semis, Tesla is forecasting the need to have 42 terawatt hours of nickel cathode battery cells for the global fleet. This could actually prove to be the biggest challenge of them all. Tesla's solution to the problem was supposed to be their 4680 battery cell, and their key message there was that they would leverage advanced new manufacturing techniques to produce these high-density cells faster and cheaper than anyone else in the market. At their battery day in 2020, Tesla forecasted that 4680 cell production would reach 100 gigawatt hours in 2022, enough batteries to power 1.3 million cars per year. As of right now, Tesla's 4680 production has just reached enough volume to power about 1,000 cars per week. So that is well short of expectations. And the Model Y vehicles that are using 4680 cells right now are being listed as standard range options. So not only is the 4680 not delivering on the promise of high production volumes, it's also not providing the long range performance. And that's supposed to be the whole point of this battery chemistry. If you want a standard range car, it should be made with LFP cells in the first place. So that's going to be a major hurdle to overcome. According to a March 2023 article from Reuters, Tesla is actively recruiting Chinese and Korean material suppliers to help lower the cost and boost the energy of its newest battery cells. In addition to those improvements in material science, Tesla is sharing their 4680 production method with battery makers LG Energy and Panasonic, who are both going to bring their own 4680 manufacturing plants online in the coming years to bolster Tesla's own production at Giga Texas and Giga Nevada. With this support in place, Tesla is currently targeting 500 gigawatt hours of 4680 production per year, but gave no specific timeline on meeting that capacity. The original long-term forecast from Battery Day was to reach 3 terawatt hours per year by 2030. Now, that is certainly still possible, a lot can happen in 7 years, but it's going to be a hell of a lot of work to accomplish that. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. 
Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. Now, there is one secret that Tesla has hidden in their white paper that is the real solution to all of these challenges that we've laid out with manufacturing. Autonomy has potential to reduce the global fleet and annual production required through improved vehicle utilization. So, how do we replace 1 billion combustion vehicles with EVs? Well, first you eliminate the need to have 1 billion vehicles to begin with. We know that automated manufacturing has a significantly higher productivity than a manual human-driven production line. That's an easy concept to visualize. So with that same logic, it's reasonable to say that an autonomous vehicle will have a significantly higher productivity than one driven by a human. And if each vehicle is contributing more work, then you don't need as many of them. So now if we reevaluate our production model, assuming that we only need, let's say about half as many cars on the road, then all of a sudden the numbers for things like battery supply don't look quite so grim. Going back to our first point on efficiency, that's really what this story is all about. Sustainability isn't just about switching from combustion energy to electrical energy. It's not just about reaching net zero or whatever other buzzword is going around. Sustainability is about using what we have to its greatest potential, eliminating waste and pushing back against the fundamental force of entropy that wants to pull us down into disorder and chaos. We can't stop it, obviously, in this house we obey the laws of thermodynamics, but we can buy ourselves and our future generations more time to figure out how to build a truly sustainable world. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.